I didn't. Good morning, everyone. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be in the land of the living. Amen. So much stuff going on in this world. It's just good to be alive. Amen. 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 God woke you up despite everything that you've been through, going through. God has shown himself to be faithful once again. Amen. Because somebody's alarm clock went off, they never moved. Amen. Yours went off, and guess what? As a matter of fact, some of you beat your alarm clock up this morning. Amen. Amen. Because I was up when mine went off. <laughs> Amen. But it's just good to be uh, in God's house, in his presence. Um, I want you all to, I want to lift up a few prayer requests. One, uh, lift up the Montgomery family. We uh, lost sister Martha Montgomery. To pancreatic cancer she has some other ailments going on uh, but pray for the family uh, pray for their strength uh, and that God will give them what they need during their time of bereavement um, we have uh, Clifford Aunt Brenda we have several Tracy Lloyd um, when you see when you don't see people if they come to your mind just send up a prayer on their behalf because you never know what people are going through Amen. Sometimes all we need is a little push uh, to get past whatever we're in. Um, and that beeping thing, I meant to take the battery out this morning, but Lord have mercy. We'll, we'll catch him next week. Amen. Uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to hop into the word of God. This morning I want to talk about uh, the compassion of God. I want to talk about his compassion. Uh, we've been talking about his love for the past couple of weeks, the love of God, uh, which people need to be reminded uh, that God does love them. Uh, you know, it, we, we're living in a day where there's so much evil and so much chaos going on that we need to hear more about the love of God. Uh, and we'll get more into that in a moment. But let, let us just pray. Eternal and all wise God, we thank you for another day's journey. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Once again, you've shown yourself to be faithful, to be gracious toward us, Lord. Uh, the Bible says that great is your mercy toward your people, and your mercies are new every single morning. We thank you, Lord, for our health and strength. Uh, sometimes we may think these things are minute things to be thankful and grateful for. But we can be here today and gone today. That's how fragile life is. The Bible teaches us that life is a vapor. And that we're here one moment and gone the next. We thank you that we live, move, and have our very existence in you. The air that we breathe belongs to you. The life that you are allowing us to live, it, it all belongs to you. And we thank you, Lord, for just the simplicity of life. Sometimes we make things more complicated than they should be. Uh, but we're learning God to be content. content. Contentment doesn't mean that we stop striving and desiring more. But it also means that we appreciate what we have in the moment. Sometimes we complain about what you haven't done, what we don't have. And really it's a slap in your face. Because we have so many things to give you praise for, so many things to exalt you for, so many things, so many ditches you covered up and so many situations you pulled us out of, so many things, Lord. If we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to give you the praise that you are truly worthy of. So once again, Lord, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to walk in a church this morning. Nobody rolled us in here in a casket. We thank you, Lord, that 
we willingly got up this morning, got dressed just to be here to hear a word from you. Thank you for so many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Now, somebody woke up this morning and they just feel like their whole world is falling apart. And I pray that you will give them a word, God, to remind them that this too shall pass. That weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Life does get better. We just got to be willing to keep living it and to keep on going through whatever storm we have to go through because every storm is designed to make us better. Not to take us out, but to, to strengthen us in our areas of weaknesses. And as I close this prayer, we're reminded that you said that in our weaknesses is when we have the real strength. Have your way today, God. We pray for the bereaving families. We pray for those sick and homebound. We pray for those who are just struggling mentally, struggling in relationships, struggling on their jobs, struggling financially, struggling emotionally. We just ask that you would have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Can you give the Lord another big hand up and pray? Amen. We want to talk a little bit this morning about the compassion, the compassion of God. God is, is certainly known to be a very compassionate God. Uh, if you look uh, at, at Jesus' mission and his mindset, throughout the Gospels, what you'll see is that Jesus really seemed to be drawn uh, to people who are dealing with tragedies, uh, people who are dealing with mishaps, people who are just having a rough time in life. Uh, it just seemed like Jesus always found his way to people who had struggles. That is, the, that is really the Gospel. Gospel means good news. Anytime God shows up in your situation that is beating you down, your situation that has taken your focus, your situation that makes you feel that you can't climb out of the hole that you're in, God shows up and the next thing you know you're looking in the hole and you're on top of it and it ain't on top of you, that is the gospel. That is what God sent his son into the world to do, to seek and to save that which was lost. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have been talking about the love of God because there's a lot of hate in this world. I mean, you turn to the blogs, you turn to social media, you look in your families, you go to work, you look at uh, all these different displays of division and hate in the world. And God has just shown me that we need to hear more about his love. Because even if people don't like you, if people don't embrace you, if people don't mess with you, they don't rock with, with you, you can always be rest assured that, that God does. As a matter of fact, he was rocking with you when you didn't even really know yourself. He was rocking with you when you were rocking in the clubs. He, yeah, he was rocking with you before you got your mind right. Yeah, he was rocking with you when you was going through all those relationship issues. He was rocking with you when you didn't want to have much to do with him. He was, he was rocking with you before you came into the true knowledge of who he is. Because one thing about it is that you will never know who you are until you learn more about who he is. And the more familiar you become with God, the more familiar you become with yourself. Because we are an extension of him. We are created in his image and in his likeness. And so the more you learn about him, the more you learn about yourself. And I, I don't know about you, but I've learned a whole lot about myself. The closer I get to God, the more I realize how jacked up I am. Anybody ever been there? Yes. All this churching we've done and all this shouting and flipping over pews and speaking in tongues and running around the church and, and, and coming to all these prayer meetings and going to revivals. We're doing all this stuff. But... But the closer you get to God, the more you realize that I ain't what I thought I was. I know I ain't the only one that feels that way. Amen. Because even Paul says it in Romans chapter 7 when he talks about his struggle. Uh, when he talks about how when he know he ought to be doing good, evil always shows up. He says the good that I know I need to be doing, I find myself doing the opposite. He's, and he said, there's a war going on inside of me. And somebody is saying, well, 
When you get saved, doesn't the Bible say that you are a new creature in Christ? Doesn't 2 Corinthians 5, 17 say that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, all things are new, of course. That's why the struggle is real. The struggle is real because you have been transformed. Before the transformation, you were okay with who you were. There was not a spiritual struggle going on within you because you, you belong to God, but you hadn't accepted that fact yet. Once you accept the fact that I belong to God, then your old nature that wages war against you is what you're fighting against even more than you're fighting against your enemies. Those people at work, they might not like you, but guess what? You just with them for eight hours. <laughs> and some of you work part time, so you with them for four. And some, some of you work uh, flex hours, so you might not even be with them that long. Lord, give you flex hours. You're going to go where you want to and then complain about the money you ain't making. Hello, somebody. Hey, Amen. You know, but the, but the truth is I'm with them for a limited amount of time. But here's the problem. I'm with myself all day long every day. I wake up and got to look at me. I, right. Right. And then when you look at yourself, come on, sometimes you got to be honest. You got to be honest when you look in that mirror because that mirror is not going to lie to you. That mirror is not going to lie to you. If you ain't looking hot that day, your mirror going to tell you, you ain't looking too hot. If you don't put your lipstick on right, that mirror going to say, mm -mm. amen. If you put on something that just ain't, it ain't coordinating today. When you look in the mirror, whether you accept the truth of what you see or not, the mirror is not going to lie to you. Now, you might lie to yourself. You might think you did. <laughs> yeah, but that mirror said, uh-uh. And you knew it said no. But guess what? You believe what you wanted to anyway. But the reason we're here today is to be reminded that regardless of what you go through, what you deal with on a daily basis, the God that we serve is a very compassionate God. I know he's compassionate because he's had to deal with me. Amen. God, 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 has, God has shown up. I ain't the easiest to deal with all the time. I'm nice. I'm cool. And then some of y'all won't say amen to it. Not y'all looking at somebody else because they did. You ain't, you ain't easy to deal with every day. All you got to do is ask somebody who really know you. Be like, you know, she come to church. She's just the sweetest thing. And you want to know why folks looking sideways. Like, yes, yeah, she's sweet. In church for an hour. Amen. But when she get out of here, she raising hell. Hello. Pure hell. Amen. And that's how people do. Because you know what we've been taught? When you go to church, you put on your best Sunday go to meeting face. You go in and you say praise the Lord to everybody you see and you call everybody sister and brother. Yeah. Amen. And we've learned how to do church. But at the end of the day, I still have to look in that mirror and I have to determine whether that word had fertile ground in my life? Did it take root? Because I preached some sermons that, that worked a little late on me. So I know if I'm struggling and I'm the one who studies the word and I hope you all study too. Don't wait on me. Don't, don't wait on me to give you the word because you have a relationship with God and you need to be praying and you don't need to wait till Sunday for a word because sometimes you need a word now. Amen. And you can't, you can't get it from Pastor King all the time. You got to get it from, you got the same connections that I have. When, and when you're going through, some folk ain't answering that phone. What if you're going through at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning? Don't call me saying, Pastor, pray. If you call me at 3 o'clock and ask me to pray with you, I might hang up on you. For real. Be because I love you. But I've taught you 
If, I, if you've been under my teaching all these years, and you call me at 3 a.m. talking about, Pastor, can you pray for me? I'm just going through it right now. And I've told you over and over that you have the same access that I have to the same God. Yes. Ooh, I'm going to be hot. Now, I ain't going to hang up on you. I might pray with you, but we're going to have some words after you get over whatever you're going through. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pray with you. I ain't going to hang up on you. I ain't that cold hearted. I'm up now. I might as well go on and pray. <laughs> Amen. So let, let's look at the scripture and see what the Bible says about compassion. Compassion is basically being able to step into somebody else's situation. That's what compassion entails. It entails you knowing somebody is going through something. <clears throat> and when you show compassion, what you do is that you choose to step into whatever they're going through and feel what they feel. We're living in a day where people don't have too much left for feelings. They have feelings for all the wrong stuff. But when it comes to showing compassion, if you see somebody that's, that's hungry and you show up and you say, I'm praying for you, that ain't compassion. If I'm hungry, don't come to me talking about you praying for me. Talking about you hope God make a way. If you got $20 in your pocket, if you gave me $2 to feed me, that's better than your prayers. Because I need to eat right now. I don't want to hear no prayer. I'm hungry. I remember being downtown by Miller Plaza before they changed everything up down there. There was a guy down there. And I was just, it was one of those days, I want to share the gospel with people. I ran into this guy, he asked me uh, for something to eat. I wanted to talk to him about God, but he couldn't listen to me on an empty stomach. Right. So you know what I did? I fed him first. And then I talked to him, right? Because what I'm showing him is an extension of who God is because people see you and they hear you after they see you, right? Right. They don't just hear you first. If I'm hungry, I ain't really hearing nothing to be honest. Come on. But God is compassionate like that. And guess what? You and I are extensions of him. So what are we supposed to be doing in this earth? We're supposed to be showing compassion to others. Let's look at Jesus. Look at Matthew 9, 36. Let me give you some, some scriptures here. Matthew 9.36. Listen to what the word says here. When, when he saw the crowds, he had what? Compassion on them. Moved with compassion. Because they what? They were harassed. And helpless. Y'all see that? Like sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus didn't just see a crowd of people. A lot of us like crowds. I don't like crowds no more. I'm, I'm, I like being a few. But when Jesus saw this crowd, he didn't just see a crowd. Neither, you know what he saw? He saw people who were harassed and helpless. In other words, let me say it this way. He saw people who had a need. And you can never see the needs of other people if you don't have a heart of compassion. Your life is going to always be about you. And this is what I love about God. He always places one or two people in your life who cares about you. When's the last time somebody asked you about you? They didn't want no money from you. They didn't want you to do nothing. They didn't want you to run to the store. They didn't want to gossip about nobody else. They just want to know how you are doing. That's a person that really cares about you. And a person who has compassion for you, if they got it, it's yours. If, if you're hungry, they're going to feed you. 
And, and this is the thing. They're not going to feed you and text 10 other church members and tell them, you know, I just had to feed. What's her name? Yeah, Nita came to church. She was looking hungry. I think, I think she needed a few dollars to eat. Yeah, and I, and I gave it to her. You know, everything doesn't have to be publicized. Right? You know, even feeding the homeless. Who wants to be homeless and a camera in their face? I'm already struggling. And you know what? Let me just say this. I got to be fair about it. Every homeless person ain't struggling. Some people choose to be homeless because that's how they want to live. We have some people who had unfortunate situations that led them down the path that spun out of control. We do have people like that, but if don't every homeless person ain't don't want your pity. Hello, somebody. I'm just being honest. Yeah. But if I'm homeless and you're feeding the homeless, please get the camera out my face. Because I don't know if you want publicity off of my struggle. And I had to learn this. The cameras don't need to go everywhere you go. Because God rewards you in secret when you move in secret, right? There are going to be some people that you never knew, never saw them do a thing. And they got all these rewards in heaven from God because of all of the work that they put they put a lot of work in here on earth. And I hear people say all the time, well, it's only certain people who are moving and shaking through the city and doing this and that. No, it's, it's a lot more. Everybody just don't need publicity. When you are per a person who's compassionate, don't let your compassion be overshadowed by likes, by trying to get a thousand views, by trying to go viral. Because I believe that you lose your reward when you are seeking attention from the wrong people. But when Jesus saw that these people were harassed and helpless, they were like sheep without a shepherd, he was moved with compassion. Matthew 14, 14, turn there real quick. I want somebody to type this in. Compassion is about action. Compassion is about action. Because there's no way, and I'm going to show you in the scriptures, if, if you got compassion for people, it's going to move you to move. Matthew 14, 14, listen. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had what? Compassion on them, followed by what? Some action. Right? What did he do to the people? Heal their sick. So you can talk about how compassionate you are all day long. If it ain't followed up by action then you might have thought about being compassionate. Because compassion is always followed by action. So I guess my question to you is, are you compassionate? Are you compassionate for the things that God is compassionate for? Because let, let me just draw this line here. It's easy to be compassionate with just your family members. It's easy to be compassionate towards people you love. But there is a measure of compassion that you should have for people that you don't know. Amen. Because we are extensions of who God is. And that means you got to work with people you don't know sometimes. You got to do things for people you don't know. You don't have to know the whole story. You don't have to know them personally. You, you know, there used to be a time where we were led by the spirit to do things. God would move on somebody's heart. And you would just do something out of the sure kindness of your heart because God moved you to do it. 
Do y'all remember those days when you would just call somebody up? Man, I just want to buy you lunch today. You would call somebody up. Man, God put on my heart to, to donate this or to do this for you. Now, people ain't hardly doing that today. Why? Because we are all about ourselves. We're trying to get more, get more, get more for self. There are still people out here who need us. I was talking to somebody, and we were talking about how churches aren't as full as they used to be. It ain't just this church. It ain't just this church. It's some major churches with major notes on their building that's struggling to pay them. Because people would rather listen online, for one. I mean, if I got to listen online, why, why am I going to come to church? I mean, I can get this at the crib. You know, right here in the comfort of my own bed. The same word that they get sitting in the church. And then secondly, I don't want, so folks don't want to come to church because they don't want to be going back and forth with people arguing because they know that sometimes churches are messy. Let's just be honest. Y'all can say amen to it. Amen. We had no mess in here in a long, long time because uh, we are not that huge in numbers the way we used to be. And I'm okay with that because I got tired of babysitting. I got tired of refereeing. I got tired of not being able to do what I'm called to do because I'm having to guide babies, grown babies. Everybody want to have their way. And I don't have time for that. I don't care if we had a hundred people in here. I would have to pray real hard and get a breakthrough before we put another choir up here. God would have to literally pop me upside my head and say, boy, I want some singing going on in that church. Because I know what comes with that. He want to lead a song. She want to lead a song. Switching musicians all the time. Folk not want to listen. Everybody want to do their own thing. It's going to all stem from back there. And then if you leave them sitting up there, they're going to be up there playing while I'm preaching, looking at y'all, and y'all going to be making faces back and forth with each other over something that ain't got nothing to do with what I'm preaching. <laughs> y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> when Jesus landed, he saw the large crowd, and he was moved with compassion, and he healed their sick. And so since you are an extension of him, there ought to be some things that you're healing. There ought to be some people who come in contact with you that ought to feel better just because they've been in your presence. Amen. There, there ought to be something about you that is distinctively different than a person who doesn't know God. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you went to some of the wrong places, uh, people ought to feel out of place just because you're there. Amen. Like, I don't feel too comfortable with him being right here. Uh, he cool and all, but you know, it ought to be so, it ought to be something about you that people see, and it ought to be that God in you. Yes. Amen. Like we used to highlight that, but it's so much stuff going on, and we've all had our our struggles and our fights and so many things going on in our, in our personal lives that we forget that we should still exemplify Him. Now, all fall short of the glory of God. We ask God for forgiveness. We fall seven times and we keep getting back up. Why? Because I have a mandate. Not only do I have a mandate, but I have a mantle in my hand that I'm supposed to be running with. Right? And you have a mantle. Whatever it is that God has called you to do, you ought to be doing it. It's not okay for you to just sit at home and say, well, I can, I can tune in to God when I get good and ready. No, that, that's not the attitude. If you got that type of attitude, then that really just shows that you're distancing yourself from what God really called you to. Because people make excuses all the time. Well, I know God for myself. You're supposed to know him for yourself. But the Bible also talks about congregating, coming together with people who are like-minded. Everybody's going through. You know, it makes me feel a little bit better when I'm going through when I know I ain't the only one. And you know, when I hear somebody else's story and what they just climbed out of a few days ago and I'm sitting up here complaining about my situation, it makes me put my hand over my mouth and say, Lord, forgive me for complaining 
about my blessed life. Because things could be so much worse for me. Come on, y'all. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. All you got to do is just walk down the street and you see somebody who just came out of the bushes. That's where they slept last night. You rose up out of a soft pillow top mattress. Got remote controls where you can do your matches up and down and all this stuff. And got up complaining. What you complaining about? You ain't slept in nobody's bushes or in front of nobody's business. You're not worried about where your next meal coming from. You're not going to restaurants after hours seeing if they had anything left over. And you have the audacity to complain about what you don't have. You got all your limbs. We got a man part of this church who has no legs. But he's going to roll his wheelchair up in here. And ain't going to complain about nothing. And the thing about it, the man's been under my teaching for about 15 years plus. And I was there when he first, when he had his first leg amputated. When he had his first leg amputated. We up in the, at the hospital. I sat with him through his surgery. And uh, after the surgery... We go in the room to check on him, you know, he's in recovery. And uh, I walk up in there, he's encouraging the nurse. The man, she said, I'm blown away that this man just lost a limb. And not one time did he complain about his amputation. The nurses were in awe by how motivating and encouraging he was to them. I said, boy, those were the days right there. And you know that was an opportunity for him to share. How am I able to lose a limb and still glorify God for my life? How am I able to sit up here and know my whole life is about to be different, but I'm still going to give God the glory because I'm still breathing, I'm still alive, and I've still at least got one leg to hop on. Then time went by. He had to have another leg amputated. So now he has no legs. But when I talk to him, you know what he's talking about? Always talking about going to the gym. Always talking about playing me in basketball. Always just motivating. Now I wonder how many of you, if you lost a limb, would still be able to give God glory. Because you know, there's people who lose a limb and they, they, they become suicidal immediately. You got, to, you got to learn how to appreciate. That's, remember I talked about contentment? Contentment doesn't mean you don't want more. Contentment means that I appreciate what I have left. Yes. I appreciate what I have left. But God is a compassionate God. Now, I want you to look at Matthew 15, 32. I'm almost done. This is a quick message about compassion. Matthew 15, 32. Check me out. Jesus, Jesus called his disciples to him and he said, I have compassion for these people. Y'all see that? They have already been with me three days. And have nothing to eat. So remember I told you compassion is always followed by action. Yes. I do not want to send them away hungry. Or they may collapse on the way. Do you know what Jesus did? He told his disciples. Have all the people. To sit down. I want them to sit in clusters of 50. And the Bible says that Jesus saw a lad. Y'all remember the lad? 
what did he have? Two fish and what? Five barley loaves. The disciples said, how are we going to feed all these people with two measly fish and five barley loaves? Now, there's a spiritual lesson behind this. They took what they had and gave it to God. Put it in Jesus' hands and Jesus multiplied what they had and the whole multitude ate. Somebody's trying to understand that in the natural. And it's going to mess you up every time when you're trying to think about how in the world two fish and five loaves of bread is going to stretch to 5,000 plus women and children. How? It's impossible. With God, all things yes. are possible. Yeah. And what he's teaching his disciples, and these are followers of Jesus, and you know he's still teaching them lessons? Yeah. He's teaching them that when times get rough, you got to keep trusting me. When times get rough, you got to take your situation and put it in my hands. Because when you try to handle things on your own, has anybody ever tried to take matters into their own hands? I'm going to take matters into my own hand. I'm going to fix this one way or the other. And as soon as you touch it, what happens? It gets worse. And God is saying, look here, I, don't, I have given you so much time to put this in my hand. And you, you're going you're gonna to learn it. Keep on touching it. Yeah. He said, I, when you came to the altar, I told you to leave it right there. I told you to put it in my hands. And as soon as you said amen, you got up, reached back, grabbed your problem, and went back to your seat with the same junk. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to leave it. You got to leave it. Mm. Tommy added a few words to it. He said, you got to leave it right there. Why am I going to carry something that God says, I got you? What type of sense does that make when you're carrying burdens that you don't even have to carry? Now, somebody's watching you worried about your next job. You worried about how you're going to pay your next bill. You're worried about how you're going to get this monkey off your back. You're worried about how the situation is going to be fixed. And you thought about everything but God. And you just, I know somebody saying, but y'all pastors always telling people to leave it with God. How do you leave it with God? You simply... Now, not only is this spiritual, but it's also mental. Mm -hmm. You have to literally go to God. Lord, this is how I leave things with God. I'm leaving this in your hands. I'm taking my hands off of it. I'm trusting you to fix it. And this is a sign that I've left it with God. I ain't worried about it no more. I didn't say I don't think about it. I said I'm not worried about it. It's like this. Once you place the matter in God's hands, you go on with your life. Yeah. Right? So let me give you a prime example. Lord, I don't want to be beefing with these folks anymore. And I don't want to cross paths with him, Lord, because if we do, it's probably going to be up. And so instead of me worried about every step that I take, worried about everywhere that I go, worried that I'm going to run into him, what I do, Lord, I'm going to place this matter in your hands. And I'm going to go on about my life. I'm trusting God to guide my steps and my enemies. God has a way of keeping them over there and keeping you over here. Without you even knowing what he's doing. And by the time y'all come together face to face. Guess what? The situation has already been worked out by God. 
you don't feel the same, they don't feel the same, and you might even throw each other deuces and keep on pushing. It ain't what you think it was or thought it was going to be when you put it in God's hands. Simple as that. Lord, this, these bills are driving me crazy. I need your help. The first thing he's going to say is, what are you doing to help yourself? Because if you want God to pay your bills and, and your hands ain't doing nothing. <laughs> if, if you, you want God to be your sugar daddy? You want God to cake you? God ain't into caking. Now he'll do some things for you. But he also wants to know what you doing. See, because them old preachers have told y'all for so many years, go down to that car lot and touch that car and speak it into existence. Listen, <laughs> how many of y'all have tried that before? I mean, because sometimes you got to use common sense. Y'all believe anything. <laughs> you know how many pastors have had folk stop taking your medicine? You got to walk by faith. Hold on, hold up, hold up, Pastor. Hold up. Walking by faith is also using the people that God placed here to keep me healthy, right? Amen. Right? What, where did doctors come from? God raised them up. Yeah. Right? Yes. You know how many people stopped taking their medicine? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my pastor told me that I'm not walking in faith because I ain't. Because I keep depending on this man-made medicine. You start taking your um, medicine, and you already know what you take your medicine for. Right, right. Right? And now you're going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Because you believe the man that didn't have your best interest at heart. That's why you got to read the Bible for yourself. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But at the end of the day, I got biblical sense and I have common sense. And I'm going to balance them. You know, just like somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm helping y'all out. We're going to have church today. And we're going to have a thousand dollar section over here. We need a thousand dollar section. All the, all the people who can pay a thousand, we got to rope this side off for you. We're going to rope it off. And on, on, listen, only the privileged. Because God is getting ready to do something amazing for this group of people. And I can hear somebody with that fixed income saying, I ain't getting nothing but 1500 this month. But I'm going to take a thousand. Listen to me. I'm going to take a thousand because I want to sit with the elites. My rent is a thousand. I have 500 left. I'm going to give a thousand, trust in God for 500 more to pay my rent. Am I teaching? Are, are y'all with me this morning? Now, me, I'm not giving no preacher my rent money. So if I'm not going to give you my rent money, or give it to nobody else, why would I have you to sit over there with your fixed income lying to you about what God is going to do for you? Because you gay. Come on, man. And see, when I hear this stuff and people fall for it, part of it is manipulation on uh, behalf on part of the preacher and part of it is ignorance on you. Yes, churches do need money to pay bills and things of that nature. 
But this this is how I view scripture. And I don't got on something else. If God puts something on your heart to do, do it. Because watch this. 10%, 20. God loves a cheerful giver. Right? You got to balance all of it. You, you got to balance the whole counsel of God. I don't I don't get it. I just don't I just don't get how Lord have mercy. Now y'all know I hate talking about money and stuff like this, but it's on me. So I might as well just move with it. I don't understand how anybody could tell you, and some of these preachers probably wouldn't be mad at me, but I don't care, they don't pay my bills. Because they be watching the sermons. Sleep, you see what I'm talking about. Um, I don't see how anybody can press you. If God loves a cheerful giver and I'm pressing you to such an extent that you are becoming earth with me, passing the collection plate five and six times, got a number in your head talking about God. God, God is he's, he's giving me a number. He's giving me a number. He's giving me, he's giving me 15. He's giving me 15,000. We got 15,000 and one cent in the room. 15,000 and one cent in the room. And we got to keep on until we get the number that God has placed in your head. No, fool. The devil has placed that in your heart. You are harlotin. You, 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 you are taking people's money. Man, let me get back to this compassion. Sometimes you can take a rabbit trail, man. Like, when you start talking about stuff and then... It's got to be said. Jesus is moving with compassion. Jesus was more into helping people. <coughs> not taking from them. He's not into taking from you. He wants you to, he wants you to prosper. Let me give you another scripture. Mark 6, 34. When Jesus had when Jesus had landed, once again, this is and saw a large crowd, he moved with compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. And I want you to look at Luke 7, 13. Just turn back. It's not going to take you long to find Luke 13. Luke 7, 13. When the Lord saw her his heart went out to her and he said, don't cry. This is the widow who lost her son. They came to Jesus and said um, that her son was dead. Jesus went to the woman. He, he, he was moved with compassion. And he told her, woman, don't cry. Now what he was doing, he was comforting her. A person who has compassion, a compassionate heart, brings about comfort, right? You know, you feel what people go through. You know, there have been, I was raised, I never saw preachers cry at funerals. And when you think about it, you hardly ever see a preacher cry at funerals. Because they've been doing it for so long that it seems like they get used to it, right? I have cried more at funerals than I'm preaching. And I used to think, like, like, am I wrong? I've, I've even caught myself, like, trying to. And I realized I'm not wrong for that. It doesn't make me weak because I shed tears for somebody else. It doesn't make me weak. It actually makes me strong as a man to be able to express my emotions in circumstances that most are comfortable in. Because I, I love people. I feel their hurt. I feel their pain. I feel their pain. You know, and sometimes that's what it means to show sympathy. Oh, my family sends their sympathy for you. What kind of sympathy is that? Sympathy is when you feel what I'm feeling. 
You understand what I'm going through. Empathy is when you step in it. Yeah. And that's what you do for people that you love, especially. But sometimes you got to step outside of that box and you got to extend it to people who need it the most. And they might not be people you know. All I'm saying is that don't ever lose your heart of compassion. People say, Pastor King, you used to do a whole lot in the streets for the youth and this and that. Y'all used to feed people and this and that. Who said I ever stopped? Maybe I'm still doing that. Maybe I'm just not going live every time. But at the end of the day, check your heart. Don't just be walking by people that you could help. I mean, I, you can't help everybody. You gotta know your limitations. And assisting people don't mean that they're assigned to you. They say if you feed a, uh, feed a pet, they keep on coming back to your step. And sometimes people can be the same way. Do what God has purposed in your heart to do and leave it at that. Don't be afraid to say no. And don't be afraid to say you don't have it if you don't have it. But at the end of the day, yeah, be moved with compassion. Let God lead you and let God guide you. Because if you, once again, you read through the Gospels, what you will see is that Jesus was always moved with compassion. Don't ever lose your compassion. Because that is the part of you that keeps you connected to God. Your compassion. And so uh, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now, you know, um, it's, it's getting real close to Thanksgiving and Christmas. And um, usually around this time of the year, there is a spirit that lurks over the earth. And it's supposed to be a joyous time during Thanksgiving, November, and, and, and December. But it's like there's a spirit of sadness that always shows up in November. And I want you all to be aware of that. Don't let a certain month dictate how you feel. Even if you're going through something, and I lost my dad last year in November. I was a little sad when I lost my dad because I love him, you know, but I'm not going to let every November make me sad, you know, and I know people deal with things different, but all I'm saying is that God can give you strength to rejoice in moments that the enemy tries to make a sad moment for you. Don't sit there and just let him play in your head. Amen. Don't do it. Get up and go around some folk that's going to make you laugh. You know, get on your phone and watch some comedy or watch a TV show that's going to lift you up. Read your Bible. Pray. Do something. Get out with some folk that you like hanging with. But don't sit around and let the devil box you in and kick your butt in November and December. Yes. Don't let him do it. And then two days before the new year, oh, John, yeah, I'm going to make me a new year resolution. No, you can be happy all the way up into that. Yes. Let us stand. I know some people are looking for that closed caption that we had last week when I was teaching from the house. Um, something didn't go right. I tried to set it up in here and we had some technical difficulties that I didn't have time to work out. But we're gonna get it there. Amen, we're gonna be uh, streaming live from different platforms at the same time. Facebook, YouTube, IG, and uh, probably LinkedIn and maybe even Periscope. You know, so uh, we'll see. But stay tuned in. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. This is a day that we have never seen before. And it is a day that we'll never see again. I pray that you would lead us. That you would guide us. That you would be with us. As we journey on throughout the rest of this year. As we journey, soften our hearts. Let us not be selfish, but let us be people of compassion. 
I pray, God, that you would help us to be more like you. Tame our flesh. Set our spirits free. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There may be someone here this morning. I also pray for Roberta. Uh, pray for their healing. Pray for their healing. Then kind of dealing with some colds. Pray for, pray for our church family. Amen. Amen. I want our church to grow. I've been talking about um, retiring. I always talk about it. But um, I don't know how sure I am about that. Look. <laughs> hmm. Don't do that, Pastor. What you think? No. Keep going. You haven't got the permission from God. Be no. You gotta teach the word. We need you. Look at ooh. Look at y'all see how Nita looking at me. Never mind. <laughs> if you saw the look I saw, <laughs> hey, man. Uh, okay, God. Let me go back to God and have another talk with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But if, if, if there's anyone here who doesn't know Christ as personal Lord and Savior, we want to give you an opportunity always uh, to give your life to Christ. I want to give this thing another real good shot. Because I feel like there's more to do, but you got to have people that's fully on board. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't do it without people. And so if this is what we want, we need to start coming together. We need to start having some conversations. We need to really take off in that direction. Amen. I'm still going to do my podcast. It's coming soon. Amen. I'm going to do my podcast. And uh, I'm, yeah, I'm excited about that. Amen. I'm real excited. And um, everything don't have to be sermonic. I preach on Sundays. But doing that podcast, I want to have some real, let's get to it type of talk. You know, let's talk about some issues, you know. And I won't feel like I'm uh, bound by preacher if I'm on the podcast. You know, so I, I'm always going to be a preacher. But at the end of the day, I want to talk how I talk. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about. You know, I want to keep it real. Yeah. Like, who's going to check me on this platform? Let's go. Yeah. And type of stuff. But it's going to be respectful. And uh, we're going to bring people in, do some interviews, um, talk about some uh, some matters that's in the community that we need to speak on. Um, might even bring somebody on as special hey. guest about five or six or seven or eight or nine times. So she can give some, speak some game to, to people because uh, she got a lot to say. She got a lot to say, a lot to talk about. I got a phone call at what time this morning? Six o'clock this morning with somebody encouraging me, you know, to let her loose. She got a lot to say. We're going to see what's up, though. Yeah. So pray, pray for her because she's shaky. <laughs> All right, if our hearts and minds are clear, we're going to pray. And of course, you can you can give. You know the methods. You can cash up in a peace church. You can text. Uh, you can click on the link that Tab always puts in the comments. You can text GIVE to 423-301-5545. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for your goodness. As we prepare to leave this place and never your presence, we pray that the grace of God and the sweet abiding communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule in the Bible with each of us, now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. 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 I love you all, and we will talk to you all later.